This video is entitled Introduction to Style and Colors. It's a companion piece to the book So You Want to Learn to Use HTML and CSS, Chapter 2. I'm Dr. James Renault, PhD, well, uh, and uh, I'll be taking you through this video presentation. In this video, I'm going to describe and briefly introduce the three types of style. I'm going to discuss the style attribute on an HTML tag. I'm going to introduce two of the styles that you'll use very often, the color style and the background color style. And I'll talk about the three different ways to represent colors with some examples. As you saw on the last slide, there are three different types of styles. There's the external style, which we will learn in a, in a future chapter, how to create an external sheet, which is a separate file that's separate from the HTML that's included into the HTML or included into the browser. There's also something called um, inline style, embedded style, I'm sorry. An embedded style usually is up in the head within the style tag and follows the same syntax as an external style sheet. And then there's embedded style. This is going to, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you some embedded style. In embedded style, we use the style attribute of an HTML tag. And in the quotes following the equal sign, we can put some style. So let's take a look at the first style here. Oh, the style within the quotes is style colon value semicolon. And then you can put another style colon value semicolon. So you can have multiple styles in a row all jammed together inside the one style attribute. So let's take a look. Um, and, and, you know, just, just I noticed a little note there to myself. This isn't the best way to do style because if you want to change something, you've got to go to all of the occurrences of it in your HTML and change it, where an external style sheet will let you create some rules, change it once, and it's changed everywhere. But to start introducing style, I think this is the better way. So let's go look at some, some style and play with some style here. So in style, we can define colors. Makes sense. There are 140 named colors. There are, if, and if you go Google or go search on, on the web for CSS named colors, you'll find a big long list of them with examples of what those colors look like. And there are 140 colors that you can just use by putting their name out there. Black, silver, gray, white, maroon, fuchsia, olive, lime, teal, aqua, yellow. You know, those are some of the most common. But, but there are a lot of colors out there with 140 names. The, uh, another way that you can represent a color is by using a hexadecimal number. And you've probably seen this on websites or seen this in as you're, you've been looking around, but you'll see a pound sign with six letters and numbers following it. Those six letters and numbers are a base 16 number, um, a 24-bit uh, base 16 number. And we represent it in base 16 because it's easier to write. The numbers, the letters go, for, numbers go from 0 to 9 and the letters 0 to A. FF represents 255 and 00, zero represents 0. 80 would represent 128. So we can um, type in the color as a shorthand kind of number. And again, if you go to some of the color mixing websites that'll let you mix colors graphically, you'll see that little hexadecimal number displayed. And you can just copy it and paste that into your style. Be sure the pound sign's in front of it. Or you can use the RGB function by saying equals RGB and then putting three numbers with commas between them. And the three numbers are 0 to 255. 0 to 255 and 0 to 255. The first number represents the amount of red, where 0 is no red, 255 is full red. 0 is green to 255 green, and 0 is blue to 255 blue. 0, 0, 0, no red, no green, no blue is black, because there's no light, where red, green, and blue all at 255 is white. 
If you want what red, for instance, that would be 25500 would be the brightest red. 8000 would be a kind of a, a more darker, more more mood, uh, muted red. Um, and again, you can just kind of fiddle around with those numbers in the RGB function. So let's see the color um, style, the background color style, and the combined background and foreground color um, being set for these couple of, of HTML tags. This H1 has a color red, so the text will be red. Um, you can then see that the paragraph has a background color of FFA0A0. So that's a lot of red, not as much green, and not as much blue. But if FFFFFF is white, then that's going to be kind of a really light pink color. Um, and just from experience, I know that, but you can go look it up on a HT on a on a web color wheel that you can find online. And then you also see that on the last style here, I have a background a foreground color or color yellow. So that's setting the text yellow, and then background dash color colon RGB zero sixty four zero. That's no red, no blue, and sixty four two fifty fifths. 64 so it's it's not a lot of green but it's some some green so that should be a nice dark dark green with bright yellow text on it using the color and background color styles to change some color here are those very same lines of code only in a full html document embedded in the body just like you'd expect it at this point and above me you can see the red header, you can see the text with the light pink background, and you can see the yellow text on a dark green background. Now, you can apply the style to any tag. You can apply the style to the body. If you want the whole body to be pink, you could apply the color pink to the, to the body. Style, quote, style equal, quote, color, colon. Um, and uh, you could... Uh, you can do all kinds of things with style, or, um, but, but you get the idea here. So that concludes our brief introduction to style and color. This uh, presentation is copyright 2020 by James Imrano, PhD. All rights are reserved. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share-alike, 4.0 international license. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact me at jim at renejm.com. And uh, I'd like to say thank you for watching.